who am I to have had the phone for two months before its official launch date? All the questions are going to be answered in my six month review. Let's go. Hello everybody, welcome back to Tech With Benefits. Daniel here. As I said, I've had the S23 Ultra for six months now. I received my unit, well, my first unit at the start of January. I'm not going to reveal how I got it. You may be able to guess by the jacket I'm wearing, but I actually got hands on with the S23 Ultra all the way back in November, 2022 and saw images and features of the device back in October. So I am very in tune and best positioned to speak to the progress that this device has made since it first sort of started getting spoken about up until now. This review is going to be broken down into four categories. First, we're going to look at the design and the display. Then I want to move on to talking about the software experience, you know, how One UI is operated and developed over time. Of course, we're going to take a look at the cameras. It's probably what you're all here to know about, how they've gone with updates as they've sort of progressed through. And I want to finish with something that's not a lot of reviewers cover when it comes to talking about this device. And that's the extras and the ecosystem that Samsung offer surrounding the S23 and the S23 Ultra. So we're gonna kick things off looking at design. Some people will tell you that the S23 Ultra and its design hasn't really changed. And from a distance, I can completely understand that viewpoint. When I first saw images of the S23 Ultra back in October, I was firmly in that camp of, they've just made an S22 Ultra. They haven't changed anything. You can kind of carry it away with that line of thinking because you start to see it everywhere on Twitter and the, the renders and the leaks and the comments, everyone is saying, oh, they've not changed anything with the design. And really what more can they do? Like, if we're being honest, the design, yes, they can probably try and make it fancy and different textures and colors, but ultimately that's not what sells phones. Samsung found a winning design last year and they very much tried to keep along that same path. The thing is though, you don't truly appreciate Samsung's subtle design upgrades and changes until you go hands-on with the device itself. When I first held the S23 Ultra back in November, I immediately saw what Samsung were trying to achieve and I appreciated the improvements that were made to the in-hand feel and the, even the aesthetic in making it slightly flatter and more boxier compared to the S22 Ultra. So allow me to explain what Samsung usually does when it comes to design iteration. They have a history of tinkering, not overhauling when it comes from one year to the next. Let's go back in time and take a look at how they've actually always done this design methodology. From the Galaxy S6 to the Galaxy S7, they didn't change much. The back glass became curved versus flat, which made it a bit more of a comfortable in-hand feel compared to the S6, which was a bit sharp and cold in the hand. But on the surface, if you had the two phones side by side from the front, you wouldn't even tell the difference. There's a similar story when we go from S8 to S9. In fact, those two phones probably had the least amount of changes in their physical appearance and physical feel compared to other Samsung phones that came before and after it. The big one that you'll note with that one is that the bezels got a little bit smaller again, and they definitely made the phone a little bit more comfortable to hold in the hand because it was a little bit thicker. There was a little bit more to grab onto on the side rails. The same can be said from the base model S21 to the base model S22s. They kept the camera housing design, but they just made it a bit more of a flatter finish. So where the S21 had the curved glass back or plastic, the S22 went with a flat glass and a bit more flatter around the rails on the sides. But ultimately, again, you look front on, you wouldn't be able to tell much of a difference. And the S22 Ultra to the S23 Ultra is a completely similar story. So surface level, it looked identical. But for me, what I really appreciated with this design is how much more comfortable it is to hold in the hand thanks to that flatter side rails, particularly with a phone this large, you really do start to appreciate that. And the flatter display on the front also means my S Pen gets more room to travel and I've also got less accidental touches. Touching on the display, pun intended, 
The display itself, again, there's a lot of people out there that talk about the fact it has the same nits, the same brightness, but that is really doing a disservice to how Samsung builds their displays for their smartphones. It is one of, if not the best display on a smartphone. I know you can probably get technically higher brightness on some other competitors that don't launch here in Australia, just saying. But when you actually are viewing and isolating the S23 Ultra on its own, it caters for everything that you need. The usage that I have for my phone allows me to really experience the, the lows and the highs of how this display handles different scenarios. Whether it being outdoors, whether I'm lying down at night, doom scrolling Twitter in bed, the display can really cater for those usage scenarios really well. I use the vivid color option. Again, that probably would annoy a lot of people who say it's too bright or too contrasty. Why wouldn't I want my phone to look colorful? Give me the punchiest, best colors you got. I'll take it. I don't want it to look flat and boring. Oh, that's natural. Natural is boring sometimes. Come on. The refresh rate is phenomenal. I have often said, once you have gone 120 hertz, I think I'm not the only one who says this, you can't go back. 60 hertz, you notice it immediately when you start to use that refresh rate. But having the variable and adaptive refresh rate just means that it's going to help prolong battery life because when you don't need that high refresh rate, it scales it down. The thing though that I really like is I live in a very sunny climate. The Gold Coast in Australia, huge amount of sun all year round, even when it's winter. So on sunny days when I go outdoors, I have absolutely zero issues looking at my screen because of how good the high brightness is. And the thing is, it's not something I have to think about or adjust. The phone will automatically, with its adaptive brightness, shoot it past the max brightness level and give me that maximum brightness. And while it is at that max brightness level, it's also going to give me accurate colors thanks to the adaptive vision booster that I've spoken about in videos in the past. It's incredible for content. I really love it as a viewfinder for my camera. So for me, it works sensational. And Samsung's worked really hard over the last few generations of displays to give you more comfort at night. And it's eye comfort shield with the other new feature that it has as well. Just means that at nighttime, you're really getting a, a really good viewing experience that's not gonna strain your eyes before you're going to sleep. And there's definitely routines video up there that you can adjust to make sure they turn on when you need it to. Next, we're gonna look at the software. So we're starting off with One UI because Samsung makes incredible software that I think a lot of people still think about TouchWiz when talking about Samsung software. And those days are long gone. When they overhauled everything and brought One UI in, they really wanted to create a cohesive software experience that stretches not just on the S23 or the flagships, but across all of their devices. So if you pick up a Samsung phone, you're going to get the same look and feel and aesthetic across anything. They've really achieved that. Whilst the S23 series uh, is much better at its fluidity, watch my A54 videos to see that difference. The overall experience of my S23 Ultra has been superb. Samsung give you everything. In those previous days of TouchWiz, you would still get everything, but you would have to figure out where it was. There's no obvious navigation process to find what it is you're looking for. One UI has just made that process easier. It's removed the steps and the barriers of entry to finding these advanced features that Samsung cram into their software experience. And you only have to look into the advanced features menu of the S23 Ultra to see all of those and all of the benefits you can get from them. And the thing I really like with One UI as well, and this came in a couple of years ago, is down the bottom of the settings, you'll notice that if you are in the wrong spot, it is smart enough to be aware of what you might be looking for and gives you some shortcuts to them. Biggest example of that is when you go into the display, you'd think you'd find always on display in there, but always on display is in the lock screen menu, but they're clever enough to realize that. And down the bottom, they have a shortcut to always on display within the display menu anyway. Now, this isn't going to be a total review of bugs and, and nooks and crannies. This is really just talking about what I love about my S23 Ultra and the One UI that's on there. I use edge panels religiously. Every single day, multiple times a day, I'm using edge panels. And from there, I also really enjoy using the pop-up windows. And I know Samsung aren't the only ones that have pop-up windows anymore, but I've been using it for that long now that it feels like we've had it for a lot longer than we have it. 
there's really good widgets now. Like there's always been great widgets, but there's some a more contextual, smart, aware widgets. Like the smart suggestions widget is fantastic. It's constantly changing the apps at the top to accommodate for the time of day that it is. The clipboard. Samsung has a clipboard. I've heard other brands don't. Having a clipboard just is great for being able to access previously copied material. So you don't have to go back and copy it again. It's stored in there. And closely tied into that is the auto copy and paste. There would be times where let's say you're getting an authentication code. You don't even have to open messages. It's already copied and extracted that code and pasted it into the keyboard area. So you can just paste it straight into the correct without even having to open the message. That is so intuitive and such a time saver when it comes to accessing things, particularly if you're like in a rush or something like that, it really, really helps. The S Pen and the whole S Pen feature set. I have done a video on every way you can use the S Pen with the S23 Ultra. So give that a watch. I am doing a Samsung Notes video as well. So make sure you subscribe if you want to see that one. Samsung's gallery is very slept on, as is the internet browser. This video is not going to deep dive into both of those, but just know that if you like a gallery that's organized, allows you to share easily, and allows you to do things like quick share and link share, albums, create stories for you, this is the one to use. The point is I really love One UI. If you give it a chance and you really explore it in the right ways, you'll be able to appreciate it as well. So that really enhances my S23 Ultra experience. It doesn't mean that the software is faultless. Like there are things that you find throughout using any piece of technology that will annoy you and frustrate you. The S23 Ultra is the same. I find for myself that the edge panels could sometimes hang. I'll be swiping and it just won't move. I think the phone is trying to catch up with what I'm trying to do. And look, it's just becoming aware of the of the nuances of your phone and knowing, oh, it, does, it doesn't like that. It's like people. You get to know people, you know what they don't like and you go, okay, I'll just accommodate myself for them. Ultimately, on the grand scheme of things, it's such a small fraction of your use case that it's not going to impact your overall experience. I think sometimes people can get caught up in the bugs and unless it's a completely buggy experience, then you should just occasionally move past those and don't worry about it. What has been superb though is battery life. And that is a combination of the software and the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy, both working together to really create an incredible battery experience. I find it really hard to kill this phone in a day and I'm doing a lot. I use this for my content creation, capturing photos of my kids, making my notes for my videos that I'm working on. It's completely the device that I rely on and lean on. And it's just a, a powerhouse when it comes to battery. Because it's got that 5,000 milliamp hour battery, and of course it has the 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy, really does give you a great experience. And whilst people don't think it's fast charging anymore, the 45 watt fast charging, I have two of them lying around the house somewhere, must be nice. It's really good to be able to plug it in and know within under an hour, you're gonna get pretty much back to 100% and just go use your phone as you would normally. Ah, the cameras. Hotly debated topic on Twitter. This definitely isn't going to be a section where I say there's something wrong with the S23 Ultra's cameras because I don't think there is. I don't think you need to nitpick and find holes in an exceptionally flexible camera system that gives you everything in a very balanced way. When people say that and they talk about the S23 Ultra's cameras, they're really talking about for themselves and their taste and their usage. And a lot of the times it's a very niche, very, very specific need that they have that they need the S23 Ultra to cater for. And look, yes, it's not going to cater for every little niche and specific use case that is required. What it does and what they do is have a very, very broad application where they are aiming to appeal to the massive population that the earth has by tuning the camera in a lot of different ways to suit social media uploading, to suit video capabilities and content creators that are only like uploading to TikTok and Instagram and really focusing on the broader application of using a camera. I'm a user who understands that. I understand the global appeal of what a smartphone camera should and needs to be to attract to that audience. The S23 Ultra balances output perfectly. It gives you punchy social media ready photos, which not everyone's gonna like. And often, annoyingly, you become the designated photographer at parties and events with family and friends. It's just going to happen. 
They see the photo you've taken and they often want you to share it for them. But it's not just the way it takes its photos, it's the amount of functional modes that it offers you to capture what it is you want to capture. My favorite feature, single take, which I've done an entire video on, is just one example of a feature and a mode that it offers you to give you more than just the standard point and shoot experience. The thing is though, whilst it has some really easy to use functionality and complex functionality, it also offers everything in between. For example, it has the scene optimizer feature, which uses a combination of AI to punch up or detect the scene you're taking a photo of and change the color science to suit, to give you what they believe is a pleasing image and one that they have studied with AI again for social media usage. What people are already doing to edit their photos is being applied within Scene Optimizer. You also have the shot suggestions, which again, using AI will give you the best possible composition that it believes to, to use. I've done a video completely on all the modes within the camera. So this video isn't going to rehash all of that. You can go and watch that video. I'll link that in the description. But what I'm really trying to say is that the camera gives you everything. You just need to know where everything is. And because of the new user interface is a lot simple, a lot more basic, you just go to the more tab and everything that you might want could be housed there. It's got really good HDR. It's contrast is great. It's colors are great. I just really like what they do with it. I like their image stacking algorithm. I like their HDR process. Everything is to my liking. And I think you'll find a lot of people who use this phone will say the same thing. Looking through the, the cameras that it has, the ultra wide camera is great because it has that dual pixel autofocus. I really enjoy how fast it is at focusing, but also the macro capabilities that it gives you because of that laser autofocus module as well. The 200 megapixel main camera, is 200 megapixel necessary? Not really. Like 108 is enough on a smartphone. However, if they can achieve it and it doesn't degrade any of the quality of the rest of your experience, then there's no reason why they shouldn't do it because it is incredibly fun to use. The thing with 200 megapixels though, is it doesn't quite give you the same colors and HDR. And a lot of that is down to the processing that is required to get all that information into a shot. For the right instance, a 200 megapixel is a luxury that is just so nice to have. If you're outdoors on a vibrant sunny day and you've got landscape photography opportunities galore everywhere, using that 200 megapixel will give you the flexibility to later go back, crop out the photo, give you a nice frame that you want and use that as you're ready to upload to social media. I've done it on Twitter and Instagram countless times already. And each time people are so surprised at the results that that was cropped in from a 200 megapixel photo. The nighttime performance of the overall camera system is probably where you could want some improvement. It all depends though, like a lot of people show on, on social media or Twitter, for example, a pitch black room and go, wow, look how much light this camera has been able to get. And I get it, that's showing its capability, but you're never likely to walk into a dark room and want to take a photo without seeing anything. You're more likely to be in dimly lit environments or like outdoors at, in nighttime where there's street lights or where there's lights coming from buildings that is more likely where you're going to be. And in those scenarios, this phone does a great job. The auto mode, at, when you are in the camera auto section, will automatically, I've said auto a lot, will automatically turn on the night mode within that scene optimizer and give you like a mini night mode. You can switch to night mode and use it in that scenario and it will expose it a lot longer. It's just a matter of how much time you have if you're willing to put up with that. However, most of the time, the auto situation will be enough for you. <sighs> I'll stop saying auto now. But the probably real star of this show is its flexibility. It gives you everything from the 0.6 times to 10 times plus beyond. And that flexibility in zoom range is really what sets this phone apart from every other phone you can find. And I know it's not a high resolution. You've only got 10 megapixel with that camera, but just the sheer fact that you can get to 10 and beyond and still get functional photos up to 30 times zoom from where you're sitting like you can see the examples I'm putting up here now. I went to SeaWorld and watched the dolphin show and incredibly how close you can get is just so impressive. So having that flexibility on a camera system that fits in your pocket is really what I love most about the whole camera situation on the S23 Ultra. When it comes to video, because that is becoming really important, Samsung had a lot of ground to make up with the S23 Ultra compared to what has come before it. They definitely, strode forward a lot with the S22 Ultra. But what I found was there was still uh, some HDR misfires. There was still 8K, which was unusable. 
So they've really gone back to the drawing board and improved things again. I honestly don't even bother with the super steady mode anymore because the OIS does such a good job that it means I don't need it. I've found the sweet spot for recording to be 4K 30 FPS. It gives me the best HDR, it gives me the best OIS, and overall just the most pleasing video. I could drop it down to 1080, but why, why have a Ferrari in the garage if you're just gonna go drive your Hyundai? And that's nothing against Hyundai, just if you have something in the garage that can go better, use it. Now I'm not a big selfie guy, so I'm not really going to be the best person to talk about the improvements of the selfie camera. I know what they've done, I know on the spec sheet the improvements and I know the theoretical benefits that it gives you. However, I just don't use it enough to know or to be to value it. That being said, on occasion I have needed the selfie camera to record some, some B-roll or some extra footage for my videos and having the 4K option to shoot front-facing video has been great. I'm very aware that this is not going to be applicable for everyone. So when people say another camera doesn't have 4K 30, on the front, I don't understand why it's such a big deal for them because I don't see them making YouTube videos. I see them complaining about it on Twitter and that's the end of it. But ultimately, you want more, you don't want less. And the S23 Ultra with its selfie camera definitely gives you more. So my summation of the cameras is that you get everything you need in a very easy and simple to use package. And it also gives you everything that you don't need but would want in your smartphone camera. From modes like director's view to portrait video, which is actually what I'm using now to shoot this YouTube video, these things that they add completes the experience that this smartphone offers. Yes, I'm aware they could give you a one inch sensor as the main camera. Yes, they could probably try and match up the ultra wide to the telephoto and the three times in a bit more of a way that makes it more of a cohesive experience. But I think they've, they've managed to achieve a lot of that through software instead of the hardware. Because ultimately this gives you a balanced offering. It is something that appeals to the vast majority of people out there and it's globally available. That's a point that really needs to be made is that if you are looking for a smartphone in a country that doesn't have the Xiaomi 13 Ultra, the best camera experience you're going to find is this one. And if you are looking for more pro settings, more expert settings, things that I really appreciate, they offer that anyway. You've got expert raw, you've got your high bitrate videos now, you've got your pro modes and your pro video modes. There's those things that they add in extra to really give you more of what you'd want. I haven't even talked about the shutter speed. That's how much I haven't noticed or cared about it. Like I said at the start, the last part to focus on is the environment and the world surrounding the smartphone. That's something I think a lot of people gloss over, is the ecosystem that surrounds a product adds to the overall experience of using that product. So you can review the phone, you can review everything that the phone does, but if you don't like the offerings around it, that's going to devalue or ruin the entire thing for you. Fortunately for me, is I've been invested in Samsung's ecosystem since the beginning. Since the days of the first Gear smartwatch that they brought out, I've been all in on the Samsung's ecosystem train. I do plan a full video on Samsung's entire mobile ecosystem in the future. So again, subscribe to see that. But for this one, I'm gonna really give you an overview over the things that I really enjoy that surrounds this smartphone. It's services like Samsung Health that pair with my Galaxy Watch 5 Pro to really accentuate, I guess, my overall health picture. Because Samsung Health as a platform on its own, with even without the watch, is so comprehensive in its offerings it gives you free health programs and free workout programs and schedules. It gives you steps challenges that you can complete with your friends, food tracking, water tracking. It's got the lot in it. And it's a offering that's just installed there on your phone. And when you add in a device that pairs with it, there's nothing like it. Other things like Samsung's partnership with Spotify. The fact that with my Samsung account linked with Spotify, I can single sign on login to all devices that have my Samsung account logged in with Spotify. That extends to TVs, which I know isn't part of the mobile ecosystem, but it's just one of those things where it's not just the phone, it extends beyond that. It's features with the buds. The fact that I can open up this case and it'll pair to my phone, but then if I start watching a video on my tablet, it can auto jump switch. And then when I get a phone call on my phone, it'll jump switch back and answer the phone and then go back to the tablet 
once the phone calls hung up. It's QuickShare, it's Dex, it's linked to Windows. It's all of these services that Samsung offer outside of just the phone usage itself, which definitely don't get a mention when people use a Samsung phone. You have an incredible piece of hardware that's incre incredible enough on its own, but then you surround it with its ecosystem and it becomes central to the network of devices that you have. The S23 Ultra is the best standalone smartphone you can get globally right now. I say that with extreme confidence. Having read a lot of reviews and watched a lot of YouTube videos on the other offerings that are out there, everything that they always talk about is the device itself. I might be biased, but for me, there's something to be said about bringing this technology with its surrounding products to the masses on a global scale. And I think that's important to note when you talk about a phone in a review. Look, that's it for me this week. I know I've probably gone a bit long uh, when it comes to talking about this phone, but when a phone is as big and I guess expansive as what this does and you've managed to use it as long as I have, you'll get to appreciate what this phone is capable of and I'm very much enjoying using it and exciting. Exciting because the Fold 5 is just around the corner. I will be getting it for the channel so make sure you subscribe like this video so then more people can be excited by what's to come. Come hang out with me on Twitter and Instagram in between now and uploading my next video. Thank you very much everybody and I'll see you next week. Phew!